Three, two, one. Welcome to the Dave the Dog Trainer Podcast, episode 92. Nine, is it 92? It's oh, 92. man. Jeez. We coming up on a Honda. Yeah. Um, for everybody that's listening to this on the Spotify and is not watching this on the YouTube, Josh bought a new coat. I did. I did. I, I'm uh, part of the Patagonia family now. <laughs> How does it feel? Have you owned any Patagonia things before? Never. Wow. This is the first one. And... Uh, like I told you, was it me or you? I think that was you. Okay. Get out of here, phones. Um, <clears throat> I, I sent you a picture, right? Mm-hmm. And you were like, buy it immediately. Like, you, I don't do think it. you said anything else. I was like, okay, I'll think about it. And then I sent that picture to like two or three other people. And they all said mm-hmm. the same thing. What are you doing? Go buy it. So mm-hmm. I went to Vegas, mulled it over, mm-hmm. came back, and then I was... I think three days ago is when I sent you the picture. Or I two think days. So. I don't know. But uh, while I was in there and I was trying on, you know, the different sizes, I'm like, ah. Uh, and there was two, two people came up to me. Hey, you bet, are you, yeah, I love Patagonia. It. Patagonia is the best brand I've ever bought in my life. You need to we got the and like the one guy. He was like getting the one with the they have the hood one oh, now. Yeah, yeah. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah. He's like, I've had mine for 15 years, and I, the only reason I'm getting another one is because I want the hood. I was mm. like, he's like, you, you need to buy this. Yeah. It's quality. So <laughs> after, you know, random people and, you know, friends, it's it's here. And There it is. There it is right there. Oh, what is that? Yeah, wear oh, it. Oh, they put that on the coats now? Yeah. That's wear, cool. Wear it, repair it, and hand it along. Wow, that's really nice. That's my favorite thing about the company is that they yeah. fix all their shit if it breaks. Like yeah. I had my coat that I didn't even buy it new, right? So I bought my Patagonia jacket. Actually, I got it for Christmas, like probably seven or eight years ago. Yeah. It's been a long time. And uh, it was, you know, it was pre-owned when I got it, right? I wore the, sh- I wear the shit out of this coat. It's like my only winter jacket I have, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, you know, it took a little bit of a beating, right? <laughs> Zipper was starting to kind of fall off. Buttons were popping off. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to need to buy a new coat. And then I remembered. I was like, oh, they do offer some warranty on it. I was like, I wonder if it'll work because I didn't buy it myself. Called them up. All I had to pay for was the shipping to get it back to Patagonia, which was like $5. Sent it back. It took them a while. It took them like, like 10 weeks or something like that. Sent it back like brand new. All the buttons are fixed. Zipper's totally fixed and re-sewn back on. Um, it they cleaned it and everything. Yeah. Right? It's like a new coat. And that, that's unbelievable. A, yeah, that's such a rare thing now, too. Unbelievable, yeah. dude. And like again, I mean, you're talking like this particular coat was like a six or seven hundred dollar coat, you know? Yeah. Brand new at least. So yeah, I support the Patagonia. And then they, they like to do all those like good environmental things and stuff. That's you know? true. Like they do on like I think it was a couple years ago they did when all that I think it was when the Haiti stuff was going on or something. On Black Friday. They announced after Black Friday that all of their profits they made on Black Friday, they were like donating to that cause and stuff like that. Oh, so wow. they're just like a, they're like a good company. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> it's great because like it keeps me regulated. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. It's it's weird. Like I was downstairs and I was feeling fine. I was like, yeah. when I might have to take this jacket off, but I was I was just good just sitting there talking to you guys. Listeners, all these things we're saying right now is how we justify spending hundreds of dollars on clothing. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, yeah, I'm just like regulated. I don't need to ever take it off. I know. I never get hot in it. I never get cold in it. Yeah. De- Devin was like. Pours me coffee in the morning. Because <laughs> I was, you know, I was like, Devin, I was like, oh, shit. I mean, you know, should I? Like, was that like 275? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I think it was 280. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And she's like, well, <laughs> do you need a jacket? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I do because like. I just have cheap, like, I have one, like, nice, like, dress-up jacket, you know, and then I have, like, that jean jacket that I always yeah, had, yeah. or the leather jacket, and the leather's, like, coming off of it mm-hmm. and stuff, and it was, you know, something from, it was, like, from Levi's or something, and yeah. it wasn't that great of a jacket anyway. She was like, just buy it. And buy I was like, a jacket. Fine. So, buy I did, and, and I um, I love it. Which one is that? Is that, the, is that the Nano Puff, or is that? It's the Down the down oh, yeah all right yeah that's i was gonna say it looks thing. thick i have the nano puff as well which yeah. is like the real thin puff jacket that yeah. they have love it you pack it up it you know your thing folds into like a cube this big you yeah stick it anywhere pretty warm right it's a nice layer yeah that one's like the in between that one's like a little thicker yeah. than the one i have but obviously not quite as heavy as the winter yeah. jacket and dude so much pocket space uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. the, the front pockets are huge i could fit anything in there yeah this uh podcast sponsored is, by Patagonia. <laughs> it should be <laughs> at this point yeah we're believers i'm a i'm a big believer though yeah so. 
Hell yeah. <coughs> All right. Well, so that's what's new with Josh. Um, <laughs> we both went on vacation. We we went on trips again. <laughs> Had a lot of, lot of travel this year, man. Yeah. It's been good. Also, how many weddings have you been to this year? I think we went to seven. Jeez. <laughs> I could be mistaken by that. It might be one less or one more. Yeah. It was the year of the weddings for you guys. Yeah. yeah, year of the weddings. So whatever. Yeah, we just got back from a cruise. We were doing the whole, you know, boat thing. Yeah. It was fun. Ate a lot of food, I'm sure. Ate a ton of food. <laughs> and now we're back at it. Yep. So sorry for the delay, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've got a couple things to talk about today. Um I feel like, you know, there's not a whole lot that's been new in the last couple of weeks, you know, yeah. really. So, you know, it's interesting. We've had a lot of guests, obviously, over the last couple of weeks for podcasts. So I feel like we haven't had a whole lot of episodes where there's just been a like, let's just kind of shoot the shit, if you will. <laughs> yeah. right? Kind of see what comes up, see what we talk about, <clears throat> stuff like that. You know, obviously, the only one that we did that wasn't a guest one, I think, in the last month was the one where we talked about, like, the Tennessee thing and everything. And even that one was kind of like a scripted podcast, if you will, right? Yeah. So today, we're just going to kind of get into just general things going on, right? So Mm -hmm. um, first thing, right off the top of my head uh, that I could think of, I I made a post yesterday, um, last night. I was was training some dogs last night at the shop, and I was doing some socialization with one dog we have in right now, right? His name's Milo. He's like a little... I don't even know what the hell this dog is, man. Little, little <laughs> scruffy uh, mutt dog. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. If you're listening, Milo's owner, I'm sorry. I'm I don't sorry. know what he is. I just don't know what he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he is. Whatever. Milo's a super good dog. He's he's a very anxious dog, right? Like so mm. he gets he like he just gets overwhelmed easily, right? Yeah. It's it's not even like it's like it doesn't exhibit itself in like horrendous problems. He's not like trying to maul dogs or maul people or anything like that, but he mm-hmm. can get really overwhelmed. He can get really reactive when he gets overwhelmed. Okay. I think if I'm not mistaken, like in the owner's contact form that she filled out uh, or his questionnaire that she filled out before she sent him for a board and train, this was starting to display itself. Like he used to be really social, like at daycare. I think maybe something kind of happened. It started switching a little bit. He started getting into scuffles at daycare. Mm. She started trying to socialize him on her own a little bit. And he started having some problems there. Right. Um, and again, it was like kind of snapping and going after dogs. Like again, not trying to kill them, no serious injuries or anything like that, but just like acting out. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so she sent him to us, you know, try to get some confidence, try to, you know, socialize him a little bit, see if she can figure out a way to kind of improve on those skills and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's been doing great. Right. Like, you know, again, we've seen some of the anxiety come out of him, like as he's working through training. It's like when you start something new with him. Here, here's the interesting thing. Right. So I think some people, um, you know, they look at, let's say we're posting a video of a dog. Right. And we're talking about the training process. Let's say the dog looks anxious or nervous or they're kind of shaking a little bit or, or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. panting a lot, bug eyes, things like that. Their brain immediately goes to, um, you know, we're, we're correcting the dog really firmly, this, that. In a lot of cases, some dogs that struggle with anxiety issues, just the process of learning something new is really stressful, you know? And yeah. we'll even see that, like, with some of these dogs. Like, we'll get a dog that comes in sometimes that's really, really anxious, where we won't even use a training tool with them for that first week. It's mm-hmm. just like, let's try to build up motivation. Let's use some food. We're just walking the dog, socializing the dog, stuff like that. And they'll still, like, look really stressed out, right? Mm-hmm. And, again, it's just the process of their brain being like, ah, I need to compute this, but it's like it's not connecting. Yeah. And, and it turns into problems, right? Mm-hmm. So this dog dog's kind of like that, right? Mm-hmm. He just gets overwhelmed and kind yeah. of like internalizes those emotions and sometimes can just like let them out, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, rah, rah, right? Like, you know, like it reacts out the window and, and lunges at the other dogs and, and this and that, right? Mm-hmm. So whatever. So where I'm kind of going with this is working him through the process. We're starting the process of socializing him, right? And as with any dog that we have any sort of concerns that like this may turn into something, you know, the dog may uh, act aggressively, the dog may try to bite another dog, this, that, we put in place safety protocols like muzzles, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we've incorporated a muzzle a lot with this dog, right? And we've kind of alternated between muzzled social time and depending on the dogs we're introducing them to, taking that muzzle off, like, you know, halfway through the socialization, things like that, based on, again, the um, how many dogs we're socializing him with, the temperament of the other dogs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it was kind of jogging this this mentality in my head. Like, I made, like the post I made, let me just read it real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Pull it up. All right, where's it at? Here? Okay, so I said... Milo bounces back and forth between using a muzzle and not using a muzzle depending on the group we're putting him with and the temperaments of the dogs he meets. 
He's by no means an aggressive dog, but can get overwhelmed easily and make poor decisions, so we make sure we play it safe until we're 100% confident with the individual dog he's around. This method has allowed him to meet more dogs and have more positive interactions than he's been able to in a very long time. I'll talk about this in detail on the podcast tomorrow. Right. Ooh. So it was just kind of, it was spark, you know, I was watching him socialize, right? And I was watching him like play. Like he was, you know, he had the muzzle on and he's like having fun. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's going and like sniffing and hanging out and like, you know, butts wiggling and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And like every now and then he would do this little, because I, we had him with a totally new group yesterday, right? It was like, and it was like rambunctious puppies, right? <laughs> yeah. Like we got this freaking Vishla puppy in right now, oh this boy. other like pointer puppy, um, this little guy that's all freaking crazy and fast and stuff like that. <laughs> and I had him out with like the wild group, yeah, right? High and energy. Like, like every now and then, like they'd be playing and running and they'd come barreling past him, like crashing them, right? And he'd like let out this little right and like he like like growl and jump to the side for a second it's like it's like no fucking big deal you know Mm -hmm. what i mean it's like you're he's fine right Mm -hmm. he didn't do anything wrong the other dogs don't give a shit about it right yeah but but like sometimes as trainers we can feel this pressure put on us whether it's um just the pressure from like what we think the dog should be able to accomplish. This dog should be at X point by now, right? Or this pressure of like the owner is expecting this dog to be just perfect with other dogs by the end of this or whatever, right? And like yeah. like we could feel this pressure of like, oh, but like, is he going to be off of the muzzle? You know what I mean? And it's a, yeah. and it's a question. And it's like, I, I clarify like, I, I understand why owners ask this question, but it's like sometimes we'll like, you know, we'll see the dog is enjoying themselves, having a good time. We're putting in place safety protocols. We're using the muzzle. Maybe we're even using the muzzle more than we probably even need to, yeah. right? And it's like, we'll send that video over because the dog's making progress and they'll be like, oh, well, have you done it off muzzle yet? And it's like... That's what you're worried about. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it, I, again, I get it, Yeah. right? I truly get it. Like we want our dog to continue to progress. And for... To, to, to in their credit, right? Mm. We've been kind of brainwashed through things that are posted on social media and things that people tell you and stuff like that. It's that true. if you need to use a muzzle, there's something still wrong with the dog. Yeah. Right. But because we continue to use the muzzle with this dog, we've been able to overcome those hurdles when he does get overwhelmed with things in a super non confrontational way where both he and the other dogs, ourselves, can really truly see that some of those behaviors, there's nothing to be concerned about yet, right? Yeah. That time that those puppies come barreling past him and crash into him and he lets out a little growl or kind of runs over and shows his teeth a little bit or something like that. Because we've put him in so many of those situations and he's been able to be in that situation and be like, wait a minute, I don't need to control this situation because nothing that bad is happening. Mm. Nothing's happening to me. My owners aren't jumping in right away or this trainer isn't jumping in right away and grabbing me because like they're scared of of the behavior that I'm exhibiting and stuff like that. And I'm able to work through and process those emotions. His confidence has been able to shoot up so freaking much with these dogs, right? And, And I really want people to start looking at, and this is even like, you know, this is even something that I'm working on with myself, right? I want I want people to start being okay with when you have that dog that has issues with other dogs, seeing the muzzle as more of a positive, mm-hmm. right? This is the same mm-hmm. exact thing as we had a client in from Colorado recently, right? And we posted the before and afters of him learning to play and socialize with the other dogs and stuff like that. And the owner was very hung up on the muzzle still, right? She was like, oh, but like, I really want him to play without the muzzle. It's like, but like... Before this, he wasn't able to play at and all. all. Yeah. He wasn't able to interact with other dogs at all, mm-hmm. right? And now we have this way where maybe he's a little bit restricted because he has it on, but he could continuously be put in these situations that were challenging for him and that he couldn't be in before, and he could learn to be comfortable in that environment, and you could learn over time to trust him more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's all because of the muzzle, right? And I want to start looking at the muzzle no different than we look at some of our other training tools. Because even myself, again, I told said I'm kind of working on this a little bit. I've even separated muzzle from like our e-collars <clears throat> or our treats or things like that. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like a separate training tool to oh, us yeah. because we look at it as much more of a short-term thing than those things, mm-hmm. right? E-collars, like when your dog goes home from training, right? If you're doing training with us because we, we do e-collar training, right? We tell everybody, the e-collar you're going to use forever. 
I use them with my dogs, right? Yeah. Like if I, if I go, you know, somewhere that I'm going to need to do training, I implement that e-collar with them. Mm -hmm. And over time, maybe they had a little bit of a negative association with the e-collar initially because it's like, you know, it's this, this tool that like is, you know, creates rules and boundaries. It means we're doing training and sometimes it's not always fun and this and that. But over time, the dog starts to get excited when the e-collar comes out, right? Classical conditioning takes place yeah. and it's like e-collar comes out. Man, now that the training's done, we get to go do something fun. Yeah. Right? E-collar comes out, we get to go to the park. We get to go run and chase the ball. We get to mm -hmm. go to grandma's house, yep. right? Yep. We get to go fucking, yep. you know, do, get, eat a bunch of treats in a training session, things like that. Mm -hmm. The muzzle can start to turn into that as well with a lot of these dogs, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I have a client that's the perfect example of this that I'll talk about in a minute, right? But... Um, the muzzle can turn into this. Yes, initially the dog isn't going to like the muzzle. Why the hell is this thing over my face, right? That's holding me back from maybe biting this other dog or doing something else that I want to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's restrictive and I don't like it. But mm -hmm. as these owners use the muzzle more at home and the dog starts to see it as meaning more freedom, right? The muzzle means more freedom. The muzzle means yeah. I get to go to the dog beach. The muzzle means I get to go play with the neighbor's dog. The muzzle means... I get to go to uh, this daycare and socialize, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It starts to create the same positive association, <clears throat> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I want to start looking at these muzzles as more of a positive and a long-term solution to some of the problems that you're having because if we're in a position where we're so mentally like, I need to get off of this muzzle, that's where bad things happen, right? We've made a post before. One of our most popular little clips we posted was one where I was talking about using the muzzle you should use it until it literally feels so fucking stupid that you're using it <laughs> that you start to take it off then at yeah, that point, right? Yeah. And that takes a long time for some dogs, <clears throat> oh, right? Yeah. And for some dogs, the muzzle may be the way that you socialize them forever. I'm not talking about Milo in this case, obviously, yeah. but a more serious dog, maybe every time you socialize the dog, you use a muzzle with them, yeah. right? And they can make friends and enjoy themselves. We post videos all the time of dogs playing with the muzzle on and having a good time, mm -hmm. and the dog is not thinking about it like you're thinking about it at yeah. that point. It's just the thing that allows them to go and be a part of things. Yeah. Catch my breath. <laughs> you got anything to add to that? <clears throat> no, I, I, I think the, the, the biggest takeaway from all that really was the, the positive association that could be, um, you know, imp impacted on the, the muzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do think a lot of people think it's always a negative thing. Mm -hmm. It's a negative connotation like, oh, they're being restricted and mm -hmm. oh, they're going to hate it. But yeah, like if you have a dog that could never do anything mm -hmm. and now you're able to at least let them go play. Yeah. Like I, I think that's a huge win for them, yeah. you know, and <clears throat> I think it, it, it Maybe it's because a lot of people, the only time they use muzzles maybe is at the vet or something like that. Sure. Like, I guess that's where you could get mm -hmm. like a negative, like imprint on it. Yeah. You know, for a dog, um, I guess kind of the only time we've ever had to muzzle, um, Bender is at the vet, mm -hmm. you know, so he's kind of like weird about it. But, um, so that's why mm -hmm. we need to get a muzzle from you, by the way, so we can train him on it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think otherwise, like when we were like in daycares, you know, back in the day when I was with you, like a lot of dogs didn't really care that they had the muzzle on because they were like, hey, I get to go like have fun today, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and if you look at it, right, let's say let's say we're taking a dog, right, that up until this point has never been able to socialize successfully with other dogs, mm -hmm. right? Like they, you couldn't even get them around another dog. Right? Yeah. And let's say we get them to a place where they couldn't be around dogs ever, right? or maybe could be around like one or two dogs, yeah. to we can socialize the dog 100% of the time with the muzzle on. They mm -hmm. can meet a new dog every week. They can meet a new dog once a month, whatever it is, right, yeah. and have a good time and play, but they never progress from that to off of the muzzle for whatever reason, whether it's because of the dog's limitations, the owner's limitations, the owner's comfort level, whatever it may be. Yeah. But they get to that place where they can socialize and play with the muzzle on. Mm -hmm. That's still a net positive. We've moved in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And as you do that more and more, that's going to continue to progress the dog in that situation. Dogs are going to become less novel. Yeah. If your dog's having reactivity on the walk, right, that reactivity is going to decrease because they're going to be starting to see dogs a little bit differently, right, because they're not mm -hmm. being withheld from them all the time, right? Yeah. They'll enjoy themselves more. It will become more of a positive association, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I want people to be okay. We get back to the baby steps and looking at, hey, these mm -hmm. are the incremental steps of progress that we want to start to see with our dog. Mm -hmm. That is a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, alone, exactly. Right? 
other point I was going to say, you mentioned positive association, right? And biggest takeaway being, right, over time, it will start becoming a positive thing to the dog. I think the other thing with muzzles, too, is some people get so hung up on the dog has to have a positive association with the muzzle before we start using the muzzle. That's right? true, yeah. So they get so hung up on, well, the dog hates the muzzle and isn't playing right now, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, well... This is the first week they've ever needed to use one in their life. Like, of course they're not going to like it. No different than the e-collar, right? Some people get so hung up on the dog should have only a positive association with the e-collar, right? I'll tell you, Deli, my one dog downstairs, right? She fucking hated the e-collar for the first, like, (laughs) month that we used one with her, Yeah. right? Because, again, it meant rules. It meant you're probably going to get corrected for something because you're acting up, right, and doing things that you shouldn't do, right? Yeah, 100%. But, again, as we got past all those things, that's where the positive association started to get created. And it's a more organic positive association, right? It's more organic because it's not forced of like, I'm bribing you and begging you to like this thing right now. (laughs) It's just that she started realizing on her own, again, that when that thing comes out, when it goes on her, it means we're doing fun shit, right? And that Mm -hmm. is a way more organic thing than the dog absolutely needing to be pumped with treats, right? In order to like that tool. And again, this is nothing against people that use treats and training. It's just, again, the general philosophy of how the positive association is created in the first place. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know, you know, that's, that's one thing that was really kind of rolling through my head yesterday and something that I think a lot of trainers and a lot of owners struggle with, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of issues, Uh, that trainers will experience come from feeling the need to fade that muzzle out too fast. And a lot of the things that hold owners past or hold owners back from seeing a lot of the success they want to see with their dogs is either not wanting to use the muzzle in the first place or trying to fade that muzzle out too fast. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I was going to use another dog as an example, right? So like I, I genuinely think one of the, and I'm sure she's going to listen to this podcast. She's going to be like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I genuinely think one of the best examples of a dog that really started getting me thinking about this whole concept, right? Because again, these are all things like as trainers we think about, but it's like sometimes like something will be like right in front of your face that you're like, oh, like, like you really, you're able to articulate and verbalize it a little bit more, right? So we had this mm-hmm. dog that we worked with, did some training elsewhere, right? Did great training elsewhere. Again, every time I say that, it's like it's not that we're digging on the people that did the training by any means, right? Mm -hmm. They did a very good job with the training. But the dog never was able to be socialized. Mm -hmm. Never. That's just, it wasn't on the radar, right? And I think a lot of trainers, and especially a lot of old school trainers, if a dog comes in with aggression issues, their mentality behind working through those aggression issues is not, wow, we need to get the dog to a place where, um, you know, the dog can interact with other dogs. Their mentality goes to, well, the dog doesn't like other dogs, so we're not going to socialize them, but we need to get them neutral to other dogs. Yeah. Meaning yeah. they're not going to make progress here, probably. You're not mm-hmm. going to change the dog, right? Yeah. But what you will be able to change is you'll be able to get your dog to ignore the other dogs, right? Mm-hmm. Which may be true, right? But sometimes you're fighting an uphill battle with that. If you're not addressing the social side of things as well, that's where a lot of the force-free community gets into you're not addressing the root of the problem. The root of the problem mm-hmm. being the dog doesn't know how to interact with the other dogs properly, which is causing all that stress and frustration and making them yeah. react in the first place. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Am I losing it, you? No, no. Okay. I got it. <clears throat> so whatever. So she did training. Kind of in that philosophy. Okay. Like just get your dog to ignore the other dogs. Yep. Right? And made good progress, but still was kind of struggling a little bit with it. Mm. Right? Dog came in for maybe four sessions, and we did a little bit of brushing up on the actual training, right? She needed a little bit of help being able to discipline the dog a little bit more effectively for stuff. But majority of our focus was on socializing this dog. Mm. Let's get your dog some fucking friends. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, let's, let's make it so the dog's life isn't you And that's it. Yeah. (laughs) In the house. For sure. Right? And showed her how to implement a muzzle, right? Went and started, you know, uh, setting up play groups with the dog. And the dog was a little reactive, but, like, it was clear as soon as we did that, this is not an aggressive dog. This is a dog that can bite people, right? This is a dog that can bite other dogs for sure, right? Mm -hmm. But the dog does not want to just attack other dogs and, like, go ham on people and stuff like that. That's not, like, it's like in this dog's DNA. The dog just is insecure and lashing out when it gets overwhelmed, similar to Milo. Mm-hmm. Right. So showed her how to use that muzzle, showed her how to communicate with them a little bit better. And she just took the fucking reins with that and just absolutely went 
went bananas with it, right? Yeah. Like, almost, I don't even know if it was on this podcast that I talked about it, but, like, she almost did it, like, over the top, like, what I typically would mm. recommend as oh, far damn. as, like, I, she starts sending me videos of, like, her dog's at the dog beach. She's, like, at the <laughs> dog park. She's at, like, these, like, pack walk play dates. She's yeah. setting up and stuff like that, like, socializing him everywhere. And Hell I was, like, yeah. whoa, like, <laughs> pump the brakes a little bit, but <laughs> that's fucking sweet. Yeah. Right? I was so pumped on it because, like, like he was just he was having such a good time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like 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 she we got past those initial hurdles. We got some of that initial nonsense out of her system and I taught her, right? Hey, you don't have to be so afraid of all this stuff he's doing because that's really the root of a lot of this problem is people see the lashing out and the reactivity and stuff like that and they immediately get scared of it and stop socializing the dog because of it. But mm-hmm. I showed her, listen, the first couple times you go to do this at home, the first time he meets this dog, he's probably going to snap in their face, right? Mm-hmm. He might growl at them, right? He might let out a little air snap. Like, he's not going to go after them. He wasn't going after them or anything. But, like, he's probably going to do those things, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's dog communication. Yeah. Right? And as he does it and is put in those situations more, we will see the net positive of that behavior will go down because he just gets more comfortable because he's in it more. Yeah. Right? And, like I said, she took the reins and just fucking, just fucking did it, dude. (laughs) And she socializes this dog all the fucking time now. Like, she is constantly, I would say once every couple of weeks to this day. This was maybe a year ago. Maybe a little, no, I think it was beginning of last summer, maybe. I don't remember. It's been a while, right? Yeah. Um, She still, to this day, every couple of weeks, will send me, like, some sort of picture or video of, like, hey, here's this new thing that I wasn't able to do before with him. (laughs) Right? And still, in 90% 90% of situations, she uses the muzzle with him. But she didn't let that mentally hold her back. And that's Good. what I think was so inspiring about her story to me, right? Mm-hmm. Like, again, I'm learning stuff from my clients all the time still, right? Oh, yeah. How they receive information, all that kind of stuff, you know, how they take that information and implement it. Um, that was that was one of the biggest things that I think I've learned in a, in a while was mm-hmm. watching her progress with that dog and really seeing how she did not let that become a crutch in her mind and mm. she took that information and those safety protocols that she needed to put in place and she just took them and just fucking ran with them mm-hmm. and lived such an unbelievable life with her dog now and her dog lives such an incredible life because he could do so much stuff now because of it right? yeah and i'll tell you that dog doesn't give a fuck that he's wearing a muzzle yeah he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> at this point yeah and like there you go let's compare it life before to life after Dude. like uh, that dog's I mean, like hundred percent net positive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. And, and and like you said, like if you get too hung, like if she you know had gotten too hung up on that muzzle, like oh well, maybe I should what? take it off or I should take it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, or I just don't want to use it. You know, like because the first couple th- again, the first couple times you use a muzzle with your dog, your dog's gonna look a little scared with it. Oh, he looks yeah. so scared with it. He looks so nervous with it. Yeah, it's like again. The net positive of continuing to do it and him starting to realize through that classical conditioning of being muzzle goes on, I go do something fun, muzzle goes on, I do something fun, that that attitude changes so fast. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It's huge, man. So huge, right? And like, we have, you know what's interesting? So this round of board and trains that I have in right now, I feel like my last round that I had in, they were all like social butterflies aside from one who wasn't (laughs) even that, wasn't even that bad. Yeah. Just kind of a little nervous. They were all social butterflies. So I was really focused on just their training and stuff. Almost every single dog I have in right now is in for like dog issues. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So it's been kind of cool to get back to some of the socialization side of things and really needing to kind of fine tune those types of things. Yeah. And, and again, I really think for new trainers out there or existing trainers, because I think a lot of trainers don't do enough socialization. Mm-hmm. You, that's where you learn the most, man. Yeah. It's through the interaction side of things. Because again, that's what people are hiring you for, right? We got another dog in right now. Again, huge kind of success, right? This dog's got about a week left. Her name's B. Um, B's like this shepherd mix of some sorts, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's had multiple successes, right? So she came in hot mess, right? Super reactive, same deal, dog aggressive. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, she was unbelievably overweight. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, just, just all, all the, all the things going on with her. Right. So from a training standpoint, she seemed to pick everything up pretty well. Like it wasn't like it was a wasn't like it was a major like feat to get her to start doing some of her commands and stuff like that, get her to focus in. Um, she was very receptive to corrections, so the reactivity we were able to kind of stop pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> her man, this this was huge. Also, her owner like this was one of the first dogs in a while I actually called the owner 
to like because she was on this like crazy feeding schedule, right? Like really, because she, she wasn't really eating at home because she was really overweight, right? Yeah. So the owner was resorting to like giving her like cooked chicken, like making rice and adding toppers onto mm. things, and like just doing stuff to try to get her to eat. You know what I mean? But like she yeah. wasn't eating because she was big, you yeah. know, right? <laughs> yeah. And and you know then she would like gorge herself and like not eat anything. So then she would like be thrown up bile in the morning. So the owner would resort to trying to give her even more high quality food to get her to eat more. So she wouldn't throw up the bile. And it was just a mess. And I just called her. I was like, listen, I was like, your dog's pretty overweight. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. I, I saw you're adding all these toppers. You're doing all these types of things. I was like, I want to cut all of it. Right. Like I want to just get her on just like baseline kibble. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want to just get her just eating a normal balanced diet. Dude, this dog looks so freaking good right now. Yeah. Right. Like she still got like, in my opinion, I would like to see her lose maybe like four more pounds, something Mm -hmm. like that. But dude, from I, I, I don't even know. We might have some before pictures of her. I'm sure I have a video somewhere. But this dog, dude, I. I took her out yesterday to work. It was the first time I really noticed it. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, she got, like, a waist now, right? Like, mm-hmm. she looks healthy. She's so much more active and stuff because oh, yeah. of it. And, man, I used to talk about this so much more before. But getting your dog's diet under control, again, it's one of the most emotionally charged things for so many owners, right? The, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, some owners, like are so they have so much emotion wrapped up into the weight of their dog <laughs> and it's crazy right it's so yeah. crazy right but getting your dog's diet under control can be one of the single best things that you do for their behavior right mm-hmm. i equate this to all the time right if you're eating garbage every day right or you're eating again i was on this damn cruise right <laughs> At that buffet in yeah. the cruise, right? You know this, right? Come oh, on. yeah. Right, you're at that buffet. You're like, yeah, give me a little bit of that Indian over there. Give me a couple cheeseburgers over there. <laughs> right? Every night you're like laying yeah. in like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Right? Gorged. You're not going to be in the best spirits and attitude if you're eating like that all the time. Yeah, to say the least. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same deal with dogs, right? You talk about anxiety issues, right? You talk about fear issues you talk about the dog just being stubborn all those types of things your dog having an unhealthy diet can equate to so much of that kind of stuff right yeah and it's so cool every time we get a dog like her that comes in that is pretty overweight and we get on a good diet we get them exercising more through playing and walking and all that kind of stuff how much their attitude just improves man it's so cool Mm -hmm. so so that's been one huge thing with her like it's Training has been going really well, but getting this, tying this into the socialization side of things we've been talking about, massive social hurdles, right? Again, mm. same kind of thing. We started her on muzzle as we were kind of getting used to knowing her because the owner said she's kind of aggressive. She went after some dogs, this, that. Mm. Not an aggressive dog in the slightest. Dude, she's kind of like a, she's a little, I think, I think she caught Actually, I don't, I don't know exactly how old she is. She looks like she could be a little bit older, right? Okay. Um, she's just a fucking police officer. You know what I mean? Like, the other dogs play. She wants to run over. Yeah. Right? Like, and again, any of those types of things, as an owner, if we don't understand them, we can get scared of those things. Mm -hmm. And she goes to run over and try to play police officer. Our go-to is always, oh, no, 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 don't do that, B. Right? And we go and grab the dog and try to pull him away. And then the dog takes that kind of police officer-ness and kind of rolls with it. And that's Mm -hmm. where you can see it turn into, like, actual, like, outbursts of aggression and stuff. Okay. But not a fucking, not a bad dog. Yeah. Um, same deal. So she kind of for this entire stay so far has been fine, right? She hasn't given us any problems. We've hardly needed to use a muzzle with her because she really didn't give me any sort of concerning signs, right? But she would kind of like either just do her own thing or just kind of be police officer a little bit or something like that. Um, a couple days ago was the first time I really saw her like start playing, Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that shift, when you see it with these dogs, especially these ones that have like never in a million years like play with other dogs. Like yeah. I think she had a couple dog friends before, but I remember I texted her mom uh, a little bit ago and I was like, oh yeah, she's starting to make dog friends. Like she's doing well with the other dogs. And she's like, oh my God, mm. bee and dog friend are two words that I never thought I'd hear in like the same <laughs> sentence before. Yeah. Right? But the second we see them shift from just being like, just kind of chill and like doing their own thing to like actually getting playful, mm. it's such a cool moment dude yeah it's such a cool moment we posted a video of that as well um of her just kind of loosening up and and running and playing and it's so funny with these dogs dude like when she started playing it was like the fu- like the funniest play ever because like yeah. these dogs like they have no clue what they're doing right mm-hmm. you see this thing like switching their head and they're just like let's just 
just get kind of crazy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that was that was for sure cool. So those are two. Yeah, I mean, those are, that's kind of what's been going. You know, that's yeah. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Those are my last week thoughts. <laughs> been getting your Brandon Fouché on, dude. I've been getting the Fouché on. <laughs> so that's been pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's uh, I. I think that's always my my favorite transformation is when you see like that first week or whatever where you know they're timid they're kind of mm-hmm. just on the outside of the play group and not really engaging and then it's finally you know the dogs keep nudging at them and then they finally break and they're like oh you're not you know this is this is fun i'm having i'm having a good time and you can like like you said it's like a night and day difference as soon as they yeah. like get it you know and you can tell that they're having a world of fun you know and and their mentality like is reworking in their brain of the, how they socialize and stuff. Dude, that's totally it. You know, and, and the same thing can be said about socialization with people, right? Where we talked about a lot of trainers, and even we do this as well initially because sometimes we need to just like get some control over the situation, right? A lot of people will focus on, you know, let's just get our dog to coexist with new people in our house mm-hmm. as opposed to focusing on interaction, which the coexistence yeah. is a very important first step, right? Yeah. Again, we have to make sure we can keep our dog under control around guests and give them that ability to kind of just get used to the person being there before we start the socialization mm-hmm. process. But at some point, we have to move to the socialization process, right? Mm-hmm. And again, it's so cool to see the progression when we see our dogs go from being really timid around our guests in our house to actually making like legitimate friends yeah you know what i mean like like as trainers we don't like like, your dog is there's not their friends right like they're just excited to see or they're controlling or this or that right but like we could humanize it for a minute and we could talk about like yeah like once your dog has a handful of people that they see as like really cool right Mm -hmm. really fun or they really enjoy being around them Mm -hmm. that's where we start to see that whole mentality shift and the generalization process get easier and easier right because you know, again, I've talked about this before. Dogs don't generalize very well, right? Meaning mm-hmm. I could teach a sit in this room, but that doesn't mean they're going to know it in this room, in this room, in this room, in this room, right? Mm-hmm. We have to go through a process of teaching it here, then teaching it here, then teaching yeah. it here, then teaching it here. Then they start to see everything is the same, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with socialization, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes they make one really good friend over here. A lot of dogs that come in that have aggression issues, they have that one dog that mm-hmm. they're really good with. The dog's like, yeah, the neighbor three doors down, they love that dog, right? Mm-hmm. They go over and they play with them all the time. Yeah. But they can't generalize that relationship to another dog or to another mm-hmm. dog. But the second you get that same relationship with a second dog, right? And then with a third dog, and then with a fourth dog, and then with a fifth dog, then the dog starts going into social situations expecting to have the same experience because they've started to generalize it to that. Yeah. Right? Yep. And that's an important process of things, or an important part of things, and something to be very aware of as you're working through social issues, mm-hmm. right? Your super aggressive, you know, German shepherd may really like Aunt Susie that comes over, right? <laughs> yeah. Or Uncle Bob that stops by once a year or something like that. And that mm-hmm. may be the one person they're totally good with. Once we get them to develop that same relationship with another person, and then one other person, and then one other person, again, it starts to get easier. Yeah. I've seen this with my dogs, right? Vinny was that way, right? Mm-hmm. Vinny was really weird with guests that came over. Yeah. Right? He's very apprehensive around them. And now literally anybody comes in the house, he just... Yeah. <laughs> Wants them to fucking bet them the yeah. whole time, right? <laughs> Deli was similar on a less extreme side of things. She was very skittish around new people, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, especially with men, I remember when Kate and I first started dating, if, like, a friend would come over that was a guy that she didn't meet, she mm-hmm. would, like, full-on, like, hackles up, like, rah, 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 like, bark at them. And obviously, we yeah. disciplined for that and stopped it, right? But she was very apprehensive around new people. And I, she literally, anybody that comes over, she's, like, basically crawling into them at this point. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So you can make a lot of progress with this kind of stuff. And I think the biggest takeaways from today that I want everybody to have are let's look at the net positives of what things do I need to do to just be in a position to socialize my dog more. Forget that picture in your head of what the socialization should look like, yeah, right? Or what your dog's behavior should look like or what tools you're using or anything like that. We just need to be able to socialize the dog, right? And for a lot of cases shifting that stigma of the muzzle and starting to see it as the ability for the dog to start socializing more and a tool that facilitates us being able to do that Mm -hmm. and facilitates freedom to the dog, I think is going to be one of the biggest first steps with this. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) I ain't got much else. Um, I kind of had a theoretical question for you, I guess. Yeah. Um, Do you think the reason that a lot of dogs have 
maybe social issues or, or <clears throat> socialization issues is, you know, originally dogs were pack animals. Sure. And, you know, and like how we've kind of built our relationship with dogs, you know, is kind of like, you know, they're in our house and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're kind of part of our pack or, you know, it's like one person or two people, mm -hmm. you know, like, do you think just like the, the overall like house dog mentality, like I, not mentality, but like how we raise dogs now is kind of a reason for a lot of socialization issues. What do you mean by that? Like, like they're not in a pack anymore, really. You know, it's kind of like a, a loner dog. Most, most of the time people maybe have two dogs, but it's usually one dog. And you know, that's how they grow up. Like they, if they don't take them to socialization and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Do you feel like how, how we have our dogs now is just yeah like a kind of like an isolation this tank good, for them? This is a good question, right? Yeah. And I don't have a concrete answer to it, but yeah. I could theorize with it as well, yeah. right? So, so there's so much out there as far as like you get into pack in dog. Everybody says, you know, do, everybody that says dogs are pack animals yeah. takes that from the fucking guy that used to study wolves and that was debunked. <laughs> and they're not fucking pack animals and whatever. You I know, forgot about dominance that. Yeah. isn't a thing. Ball, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like everybody likes to discard all of that. Yeah. Right. I think personally, historically, right. Whether it's humans, whether it's dogs, I think there is a sense of pack we all have. Yeah. Right. Humans, right? You have your pack. You have your tribe. You have your yeah. inner circle, your outer circle, your bigger circle. You know what I yep. mean? Like we yep. have different circles of people that we exist within, mm -hmm. and everybody else outside of that is strangers to us. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah. we could learn to develop relationships with those people, but if those strangers just immediately just intrude themselves into our inner packs without some sort of proper introduction yeah. or invite or greeting or something yeah. like that, yeah. that can create problems. That off puts us as humans, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's this biological thing that's ingrained into us or a learned thing that we have, I see similar behavior with dogs, right? We mm -hmm. see it in daycare, right? Our daycare pack, right, of five dogs that hang out with each other every Monday, mm -hmm. right? You bring a new dog into that mix, Who's the new guy, right? Yeah. They all know that. They yeah. all know this dog isn't a part of us yet, Yeah. right? And I think that sometimes what we do as humans is because we don't understand how to properly socialize a dog, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't understand what these dogs need socially in order to be introduced, right? What type of energy they need around them, what type of supervision they need around, mm -hmm. uh, around them. I think what happens is we force that introduction mm. into what they perceive as a pack, yeah. Right in an improper way that the dogs are like, no, 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 this mm -hmm. isn't correct. You know what I mean? And it turns mm -hmm. into a problem, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know if it's this deep pack <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know if it's this deep biological pack thing mm -hmm. or if it's just this perceived way that humans, animals, yeah. right, view their relationships that they have, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, most problems are just stem from owners not understanding the communication that they're seeing and understanding how to properly introduce in the first place. Yeah. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think at the end of the day, it is probably 99% of how you're going about your socializing of your dog yep. or I introduction. 100%. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think you're right. A lot of people, you know, they're, they're like, oh, my dog's young, so he'll be fine. And you just mm -hmm. throw him to, to the wolves. <laughs> 100%. You know, you're like, hey, go go have fun. And it's like they, you know, it, I mean, it's like, okay, like you want to talk about a human or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like when you have like a big, let's say you have a corporate party or, yeah. or, or whatever. And you're, you're like, they're like, hey, we want you to be the guest speaker. And you're just like, oh, God. You know, like like if it was a surprise and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, it, yeah. it's like and then that impacts how you feel, you know, that whole time. So, I, you know, it's just. Yeah, I think, you know, again, there's so much we could as trainers, we fight the humanization so much. Oh, yeah. But I think there's so much we could learn by correlating a lot of this stuff to humans. Yeah. Right? Again, yeah. people outside of our circle. Right. Like everybody like I know myself and like like Kate, my wife. Like, she'll talk to anybody, you know what I mean, and immediately welcome somebody. And there's mm -hmm. some people that are like that. There's some dogs that are like that, right? Oh, yeah. 
I, on the other hand, if somebody just like came up to me and just started talking to me, yeah, I'm gonna get, get really uncomfortable by that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And oh, yeah. I might not act aggressively, but like yeah. if that person comes in and immediately is so like pushy and energetic and blah blah, blah yeah, that's gonna be real off putting <laughs> to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So 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 you could equate equate different types of human personality to different types of dog temperaments, mm-hmm. you know, and understand a little bit more deeply why a certain dog behaves a certain way. Yeah. You know? Yep. And every person, you know, is capable of, you know, get into violence, right? Every person is capable of those types of things, just like every yeah. dog is capable of those types of things. Mm-hmm. Every person has a different threshold they exist on for that stuff, right? Yep. Just like every dog is a different threshold. Of, yeah. Of, you know, how quick they can resort to things like that, you know? Yeah. And in the human case, our violence in a lot of cases are words, right? We can verbalize yeah. things more, more clear. In the dog world, it's physical, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I think that is a that is a good way to look at it because, you know, <clears throat> we talk about not humanizing it. But, like, a lot of times I feel like people just blanket, like... <laughs> dogs like oh mm-hmm. they're all kind of the same yeah you know and they throw that blanket over and just think that oh these dogs act mm-hmm. exactly like my dog or whatever but yeah. like you said every, every dog's got its own personality at the end of the day 100 percent. and if it's the you know the the drunk frat guy that likes to beat people up or the bully or whatever you know like that's gonna be that dog yeah for sure that's all i got oh yeah <laughs> Well, we're going to end that on that. We got another one coming at you guys this week. Obviously, we're going to be doing, we're playing a little bit of catch up again with some episodes. So there'll be two coming out this week. Um, This one wound up being great. Yeah. I actually didn't fully know how much we were going to talk about that. I had some other things pulled up, like just in case, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, but this good. one, this was good. I think this is a good, good comeback for Yeah. It. Yeah. So I'll have this one up on Wednesday and then we'll have our, we'll get back to our regular scheduled programming Hell yeah. on Thursday. All right, guys, we'll catch you guys next time.